Good day. This is Julie Broad, founder and president of the Positive Organizational Behavior Institute. I'm with Dr. Fred Luthons today. We are very honored to be speaking with the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras um, and your Department of Management for your annual research symposium in 2021. Today, we're going to talk about for performance, competitive advantage, and well being of Indian employees and families the need for positive organizational behavior and psychological capital is greater now than ever. And throughout the course of this, Dr. Luthans and I will be having um, a conversation that we hope will help shape and form your ideas um, about what well-being and performance look like within India and within your work. So before we get started, just some quick introductions. As I mentioned, we have Dr. Luthans with us today. He is a very decorated emeritus scholar from the University of Nebraska. Um, we're going to learn more about his accomplishments in the next slide. He's a top 1% scholar across all sciences. Um, and you'll see why that's so in the next slide. Also a colleague of mine in the Positive Organizational Behavior Institute, looking at global well-being and performance. And as many as of you know, he's the number one cited researcher in organizational behavior textbooks. In addition, Fred's been phenomenal at taking research to practice. So working with large global organizations like Shell, DuPont, um, even with NASA and the Mars mission. Um, so all over the world, he has replicated his research with his network of scholars and looking at positive organizational behavior and positive psychological capital. Just to give you a reference, Fred's passion is definitely to conduct basic research and evidence-based cred credibility in top journals. You can see that um, Dr. Luthans has almost 100,000 citations. That's what generates this top 1% scholar um, award that he has received. He also has an H index of 110, meaning he has 110 um, articles with at least um, 110 citations. So very impressive work and known as a leader within our field. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Julie Broad. I am the president and founder of the Positive Organizational Behavior. This is a global think tank. It's a nonprofit dedicated to um, the research agenda of positive organizational behavior and PSYCAP globally as we look at well being and performance. And today, what we would like to do is, first of all, um, welcome you all after introducing ourselves and also talk about the accolades we'd like to extend to IIT Madras. Um, we recognize you as a top engineering university in all of India for five years running, which is a phenomenal accomplishment. And so we um, send our accolades and congratulations for being the best of the best. You're definitely champions in technology. And Fred, do you want to say a few words about IIT Madras and their accomplishments? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, first of all, I want to tell the audience that you see why I have Julie with me. <laughs> she is very, very accomplished herself and just a wonderful colleague that is able to say in much more eloquently than I uh, why we're here. And I wanna just add a little personal note that I have always greatly admired my Indian colleagues over the years. And I've been so pleased of how much they have been receiving my, my work over the years and have frankly given me more credit than I deserve. Uh, but I really, jumped at the chance when VJ said that you guys were having a conference and uh, I just want to want you all to know that you're in my esteem the best there is in all the world not just in India and so I just want to make sure that you understand that I understand that you guys are really doing a great job in research and getting known throughout the world for being such a world-class institution and then your department within the engineering uh, curriculum there at IIT. So anyway, we're happy to be here and uh, we just want you to know that we know <laughs> that you guys are the elite of the world, not just in India. Well said, Fred, thank you. 
Um, obviously, we recognize your significant contribution to science. So Fred, I wanna um, have a dialogue with you throughout this um, discussion in your keynote. And one of the first things I wanna talk about is something that you and I have had long discussions around this overview of the 21st century paradigm shift. What we're experiencing as a result of things like the global pandemic, but things that were really set in motion before the global pandemic, right? Around looking at the World Economic Forum, um, VUCA context, really seeing a fundamental- now let me shift. let me call out that VUCA. They may not be uh, familiar with the term, but we are uh, increasingly using the VUCA uh, to stand for, as it says here on the slide that you can see, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous environment that we're in. And the US government and the US military are using the term VUCA. So I want to throw that out there just in case you're not familiar with it. Absolutely. And one of the good parts of this is that we know that when we look at the 21st century, um, the World Economic Forum, for instance, points to a lot of geographical instability, blurring geographical and political lines. We see this with accelerated breakthroughs in science and technology. And obviously, IIT Madras sees this as well as the scientific research and evidence and science are perhaps more important than ever, especially when we think about how we're going to combat the global mental health crisis that we're certain to face in our workplaces. And we're hearing more and more about the mental health fallout. It's not just the pandemic itself, and it's not just the physiological health problems that are occurring, but the mental health is just exploding all over the world. And it's coming to the surface for the first time. Uh, we have to do something about it. And that's where we're committed with POBE to, to that side of things other than just how can we increase productivity and performance. But the key to this is, the beauty of it is we can do both. We can do not only performance, which we've spent most of our time with in, in my arena, but now we can do something about mental health. And we'll get into that as Julie will tell you. Perfect, thank you, Fred. So psychological capital, to many of our viewers, this may be the first time that they're being introduced to the concept of psychological capital. So Fred, do you wanna give a, a few yeah. on the yeah, concept? I'm sure most of you have heard of it. I hope you've heard of it by now, but maybe not some of the students, but it's certainly I know the professors have. But I just wanna remind everybody exactly what we're talking about here. So I was lucky enough to be on the ground floor of positive psychology. And when I say on the ground floor, I mean that literally because we had hosted here in Nebraska, here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where my University of Nebraska is, I was lucky enough to be part of the um, Gallup organization as a senior scientist along with my uh, university position and we held the first positive psychology summit at Gallup in Lincoln, Nebraska. And at that time, I heard Martin Seligman, who all of you know is probably the founder, or at least the recognized father of positive psychology, he was there. So were all the other gurus of positive psychology. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, why aren't we doing this in our field of management and human resources and organizational behavior. So at that point is when I then decided we're going to do positive organizational behavior. And I was lucky enough to get that into the literature, the published literature in the academic literature, not just in the consulting, you know, which had been talking somewhat about positive approaches. But I, I set up from the very beginning at the top of the slide there, what the scientific criteria were going to be to be part of psychological capital. And that's scientific criteria amounted to number one, I wanted to make sure that we had theory and research to back up what was included in psychological capital. So that was my first criteria. It had to be based on theory and research in the published academic literature. 
Number two, it had to have valid measurement. So we set out to do and validate a measure of psychological capital. Right now, I've had several thousand requests for that, you know, who bother to get my permission on our copyright, copyrighted uh, instrument called this scientific, uh, excuse, excuse me, called the Psychological Capital Questionnaire, PCQ. And so we've had that validated in the top journal, again, here in personnel psychology, uh, we had that validated. And then thirdly, we had to have the idea that we could still develop what was included in psychological capital. So we moved away from traits and characteristics even toward what we call state-like, not you know a pure state, like a mood maybe or something like that, but that it had to be state-like, i.e. that it could be open to development. And that, ter that turned, to be out, turned out to be a very uh, important uh, criteria to separate us from all the personality uh, traits and characteristics and even strengths and things like talents and things like that. And then finally, it had to have impact on ob objective criteria that had to do with performance and well-being. So that's the criteria. I searched the literature, primarily the positive psychology literature, not, not just organizational behavior. And I came up with, as you see here, first of all, that met those criteria were hope, having the will and the way. Now, again, there's a you know 500 page book on hope theory. There was considerable research being done in positive psychology on hope, but not in our field of organizational behavior and management. Very little, if any, uh, work had been done on hope, but there has been theory and research in positive psychology. And they talk about having not only the will, the goal setting and all that that goes with it, but also how you're gonna attain those goals and what were the alternate paths to those goals. The second one that we found met our criteria and to me met the criteria better than the others were, was efficacy, self-efficacy, efficacy having the confidence and belief. And of course, uh, I had been doing some work in efficacy and had a psychological bulletin uh, meta-analysis on efficacy that really related to the criteria very well. Uh, you know, what I just ticked off to you, theory research, valid measurement, um, open to development and performance impact and uh, impact on desired outcomes. And then the, th the third one that met the criteria, not as well as the first two actually, but still met my criteria was resiliency. And of course that has turned out in recent times to be very important because of the bouncing back from everybody meeting. It's not whether you'll have resili need resiliency, but when you'll need resiliency. And so the bouncing back and beyond in the resiliency component from Ann Maston in psych positive psychology and others. And then finally, optimism, the positive attribution for the future that things are gonna be you know, better in, in the time to come. Also the, that the glass is half full rather than half empty, that kind of thing. And then the expectation that things will be better and boy, we need that now. And what does that all st st spell out to be? And I didn't set out to do this. This kind of just came to me after where I'd been talking about the, these four uh, resources, but it's H-E-R-O. It's the hero within us. And I just had to put Gandhi up there. One of my heroes of all time would be your hero, my hero. I assume it's all your hero, uh, Gandhi, because it certainly is in the West and in, in my, my view. So anyway, that's I, I consider someone like Gandhi just a you know, perfect example was somebody with very high H-E-R-O, someone with very, you know, very high hero within. That's right, Fred, that's phenomenal. And since you introduced this concept of psychological capital, um, this scientific evidence-based approach to the development of psychological yes. capitals now been replicated on every continent all over yes. the world in a number of domains. Um, yes. So we're going to talk about some of the impressive findings in the research 
um, next. But you know, when we talk about looking at global well-being and performance with PsychHap Hero, um, this can be applied to our youth, to people in our workplaces, to communities. Um, even to people as we've experienced in your work with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute that may be terminally ill focusing on well-being and performance during an unfortunate path. So it can be valuable to us even in diagnosis and deficits, but also when we're wanting to optimize human potential. Yes, and that's where we're really taking off in recent years here, but especially in recent, <laughs> within, the, within the last year. Uh, taking off across the world like this. And that's why they're citing my work and I ended up in that top 1% of all research in the world. That's right. The demand has never perhaps been greater. Right. Um, so Fred, talk to us next. We've got a few thoughts about all of that research, right? Now in um, all the peer reviewed literature, right? Uh, right. Meta analysis, looking at what the benefits are when we develop psychological capital. Walk us through what some of the findings have been from that literature. Yeah, and, and I'm just now kind of going off, you know, beyond the meta-analysis. That's what it says there, post-meta, means that beyond the meta-analysis that is in the published literature, uh, there's two or three of them that have been done so far, including in India. Uh, there's been a meta-analysis published in the academic literature on the impact that PSYCAP has on especially performance satisfaction, commitment, organizational commitment, organizational citizenship behavior. That's in our literature, the OB literature. But now just more recently, we have found that throughout the world, as Julie pointed out, the higher the site cap, the higher well-being, mindfulness, engagement, ethical climate, hardiness, humility, voice, safety, justice, trust, et cetera, et cetera. Almost every variable that you can think of has been done, but there's still room to refine that. And there's still room for future research to show the impact on these positive things that PSYCAP can, can affect, including experimental designs that says that PSYCAP causes these things. So, you know, we have uh, really sophisticated experiments in the published literature that the higher the psych app, the higher these good things in life and the good things that we're now really concentrating on in the world today. And then of course, the higher the psych app on the other side of the slide there, the, the, the lower the substance abuse, which is a real problem like the opioid crisis that we've had here in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, the higher the psych app, the lower these substance abuse and addictions, the higher the psych app, the lower the work family conflict, depression. And I'm gonna star that one because this is really critical right now in our mental health fallout from the pandemic. So the higher the psych cap that can be developed, remember that, that we've shown can be developed through experimental designs, the lower the depression, even when the studies have pitted it against the meds, which of course are the, you know, the physical model, the uh, medical model, as well as the most sophisticated, and, and I love too, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the best that mental health professionals have been able to offer. But our psych cap is actually having a bigger impact on depression than the medical model and the therapeutic model. The lower the burnout, which is a big problem throughout the world right now, the lower the emotional labor, stress, negative affects, incivility and harassment, which of course is a big problem all over the world, including India, but of course in the US as well. Uh, the higher the psych cap, the lower the incivility in the workplace, but also in, as Julie has specialized in, uh, in the uh, government agencies, the NGOs, as well as in families and, you know, the incivility and harassment problems uh, between domestic abuse and things like that. And then, of course, the, the higher the psych cap, the lower the turnover, both in terms of intentions as well as actual at absenteeism, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we could go on, but I hope most of you know this literature. And if you don't, just search for it. It's there. 
That's fantastic, Fred. And it's very impressive work, no doubt. The other thing that I recognize when you're talking about this that's so valuable is that PSYCAP eliminates stigma because yes. it came out of the business school. Very importantly, it eliminates stigma. And I know I've seen you live presenting that in places like in Beijing. Can you say a few words about the stigma being reduced through PSYCAP and the work? And yeah, this is, this is huge. As we know, the biggest, the biggest barrier in mental health throughout the world has been stigma, meaning that people just are hesitant to seek out help when they need it. And boy, do they need it. You know, can you've even looked at some of the statistics there in India, right, Julie? That's right. Just, you know, with the global mental health fallout, you know, we also see in India, just like in the US, you know, significant increases in stress, anxiety, and depression. Right. And, and, and people are, you know, hesitant to go seek help on this. And if they do, there's really nobody to go to because of the stress on the system of mental health in the, in the world. And when I say nobody, of course, there are you know, colleagues that we all have that are doing a wonderful job, but there just aren't enough of them. And so we have to do something about that. And I just think that we have an answer, not the answer, That's but we right. certainly have to start looking at. Absolutely. Great. Okay, Fred, that's really helpful. I like that too, right? This is not a one size fits all the answer to everything, but it is a scientific evidence based approach that could be part of the solution. Right. Um, so, you know, when we think about this on the next slide, you'll know, talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing. And we just did some of those indicators, but what we're seeing, not just in India, but really around the world and some of our work, what we're combating, looking at this on, on multiple levels. Yes, and on the left there, of course, we've been talking about this so far and we're, we're limited on time here. But the key to this is that we, we definitely feel that these are the issues today, not necessarily performance, but guess what? This also affects performance at the same time simultaneously. But Julie has led the, the effort on the right here through her POBE, Positive Organizational Behavior Institute, .org, if you wanna go look at that on our website. Uh, go to POBE.org, uh, O-R-G. Uh, but could you talk about that a little bit of what we're doing with our certified PSYCAP gatekeepers as a, a solution sure. to some of the problems? Absolutely, Fred. So. You know, it's such an interesting time in all of our lives, not just because of what we've been through in the last 12 months, but also because of the great work that you and your colleagues um, within POB and PSYCAP researchers have put out. We know a lot more about well-being and performance in the last two decades than we've known ever before in the history of time. And part of that knowledge tells us that POB and PSYCAP are those non-stigma approaches that have those causal links where we see as Fred described those positive things going up and negative things going down. We also know that lay persons um, being trained on well-being and performance can drive value into workplaces, into our home, into our health. In fact, Fred, your research with Dr. Carolyn Yusuf Morgan has yeah. also helped us understand that we can increase not only workplace well-being, but also impact home and social, social and health side and, as well. And Julie's doing some of that work right now as we speak. And that is such a big breakthrough in my eyes, just to alleviate the fractured mental health system in the world. We have problems in the US, but the, it's magnified in countries like India, China, and Europe. So this is huge. And if you could continue about this gatekeeper model. That's right. Fred, you know, when you were speaking about that, it made me think about the geographical disparities, which I'm sure are, are experienced in India as well. And the US, 65% of our counties don't have access to trained clinical mental health or psychiatry services. Um, so if stress, anxiety, and depression are on the increase, you know, there are therapies for these things, 
um, but the stigma and the geographical disparity are great hurdles. So lay persons help really meet that gap, that demand. Um, as Fred described, we don't have enough trained mental health professionals to meet the ensuing demand. But if we train lay persons and we train people at work, we know that has a trickle down effect in every area and facet of our lives. Yep. Um, so gatekeepers can be trained to serve their population in the workplace to those in distress, but also for those that are maybe star performers that are shooting for well-being and performance targets. So it's a true enterprise intervention. If I'm in distress, it helps me um, alleviate that, maybe headed towards anxiety and depression. I can use skills from SICAP and coping skills development to help me get that under control. But also if I'm an elite performer, um, I can get used to being operating in a, a VUCA context and learning how I protect and um, positively build my PSYCAP and well-being and performance. And that's going to continue into the future because of the VUCA environment, not just the pandemic. Once the pandemic is hopefully under control, which we're all praying for in this country, and I know over there as well, then we're going to have something in the future. That's right. But the idea of gatekeepers and the workplace being a place where we can impact this problem is significant. We spend a third of our lives in the workplace within our organizations. So looking at how we develop SICAP for individuals, groups and teams, leaders, organizations, and even countries overall. Yes, measuring it for countries overall um, provide us with great predictive analytics for the future. Right. So um, IIT Madras, Department of Management, we recognize that you are the leaders who will wrestle with COVID-19 fallout and the impacts on well-being and performance. We do believe that as Fred said, that this is an evidence-based solution that could be part of the solution um, and looking at how we simultaneously address this mental health fallout while improving well-being and performance in our organizations. Fred, any thoughts here? Yeah, just that Julie has been working with government agencies, uh, what we call over here, you know, FEMA and what we call uh, some of these issues that they face. And they are very excited about POBE and about SICAP in, and our gatekeeper model. And so we're, we're building on that and we're doing a lot of work with suicide right now, which is a, you know, the ultimate of, as one of our colleagues says, you know, the final decision. And that is so tragic here as well as there. And I just want to want you to know that we're working on that as well. But I think we're out of time, but we really feel very strongly that obviously SiteCap is a good answer. And I know you guys do too. But I hope that we all can get together on this and you know give back to society rather than at this stage of our careers and all. It's time for us to step up and help the whole society in, in India as well as the US and, and European and Chinese and the whole world. So anyway, that's what I have to say. And I, I wanna thank Julie for helping us give us this presentation that you all now take off with in your research that you're all doing and everything you do is contributing and that's what you gotta look at. That's right. Fantastic, Fred. As always, it's great to spend time to you. We wanna extend our thanks to IIT Madras. It's an honor to be with you today virtually and we'll hope someday in our future it can be in person. Yes, you have to show us Indian food that our restaurants here couldn't match, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you all. We wish you all a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.